看一下签名。Good evening, guys. I think I can see my best friend, Jennifer. How are you guys? So, if you can hear me and you want us to start the class as soon as possible, ah, uh, God, I did not claim equity from the board. So if you can hear me, I want to start as soon as possible. Just uh, signify so I can know that you can hear me. So a little bit of okay. So now uh, I'm about to start company law. So if you can hear me and you're with me, please. Uh, put it on um, in the comment section below so I can, I would know if you can hear me. Please put it in the comment section below. Hello guys, can you hear me? Please put it in the comment section below that you can hear me and we can proceed. Okay, I think I saw I did tell me was thumbs up. And then someone from Achievers University say hello. Okay. Uh yes, Adi Adi Yami Tommy Warada said I can hear you. Okay, I think it's time for us to proceed then. So yes, my name is Olayen India Colola Daniels and I'm a five hundred level student, faculty of law, University of Lagos. And um uh for those who do not know me, that, that's, that's the reason I introduced myself. For company law today, um, uh, we are going to be talking about sole proprietorship as well as partnership. Do you understand? And it is very important for us to start from the beginning while discussing company law because so many things have changed since they you know, started using the new camera. Please, one minute. So I want to take my camera. Please make sure that you take yours too as well. It is very, very, very important that we are with our camera. Very, very important. So yes, uh, now I'm going to start with, oh Jesus Christ. So I'm going to start with um, what is sole proprietorship. But before I go into what is sole proprietorship and all that, so yes, I'm starting with uh, what is uh, sole proprietorship. And before I go into what is sole proprietorship, we have to first understand what a business is. We are not babies. But it's very, it's very uh, essential for us to understand what a business is. The essence of us having something known as sole proprietorship in law, something known as partnership in law, as well as something known as a company, is because of business. Do you understand? Because we want to make money. Do you understand? We also have the incorporated trustees. I hope people can hear me. Let me, let me close this place. Okay, so as I was saying, we also have the incorporated trustees. I hope you guys are with me. I hope you guys are with me. Yes, so I must said that a sole proprietorship can be defined as a business owned and financed, owned, financed, and run by one person. Moshud is excellently right. Yes. Now, we have a sole proprietorship as a form of business so that one person can run the business. Do you understand? And it is usually sought after. Sole proprietorship is usually sought after because it is very easy to run. You don't have any legal hiccups here. And then, and then you don't even have the money to run it. You, with your little capital, you can start one or two businesses and you can move on. 
Do you guys understand? Now, but when, when you are talking about other forms of businesses like corporation and all that, which we are still going to get to, you will need more money. Now, let us go to our past question. I hope your past question is with you. Um, it is very important that while we are having the class as well, we are able to go through the past questions so that we can understand how important it is to do this. Uh, so, now let us start with uh, common law. Let's go to, I, I, if you are with your past question, please follow me to um, question 2016-2017, question number one. If you are not with this, this particular one, can you see it? Yes, 2016-2017. Please, if you are with your past question, go to the past question, 2016, 2017, number one. If you guys can see it. Now, if you get there, you will see that according to, um, according to uh, uh, the past question, it says, well, the rationale for the choice of a particular form of business may vary from one person to another, it is widely accepted that this choice is informed by a number of legal and non-legal benefits. Can you hear me? Okay, so let us move on then. Now, we were talking about the legal benefits with the past question. We are, uh, um, according to 2016, 2017, they said that we should demonstrate our answers with at least four forms of um, um, business association by highlighting the important legal parameters that distinguishes one structure from the other. Now, this is 2016, 2017. What basically they are saying is, tell us the four types of business associations that we have. Do you understand? That's forms of associations that we have. And tell us how one is different from the other. Basically, what they are saying is, tell us the advantage of one over the other as well as the disadvantage of one over the other. Do you guys understand? Do you follow that? If you follow that, please can you put it in the comment section so I know that you are following me. I think five people are currently online right now. Please put it in the comment section if you are following me. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I want to believe that you are currently following me, right? Okay, so let's continue. Can you guys hear me now? I'm still here with you. Can you please put it in that you can hear me. Hello, guys. Okay, so let me continue what I was talking about. Now, what I was talking about was in relation to um, question 2014-2015 of company law. So if you go to question number one of 2014-2015, you would see that the according to what the lecturer said, ADBC who former Suleiman Johnson and Yahaya, five people, all graduated from the University of Lagos in 2003 with degrees in chemistry, economics, sociology, law, and business administration. Then, um, Ifoma and uh, Suleiman were active members of the University Scripture Union and want to establish a church. The others want to pull their resources into. Now, I advise them on the preliminary required cooperation of an appropriate corporate form or forms. Now, basically, the question here also is forms of businesses. We are asking, or they are asking, should we 
a sole proprietorship or should they have a, a, a partnership or should they have a corporation or should they have a uh, what is it called um, incorporated trustee so before we can answer that question let us first start by what is so so uh, can you guys hear me so as i was saying uh i was talking about the ASO proprietorship and i told you that a sole proprietorship is a business run by one person do you understand when you're talking about a sole proprietorship you're talking about the business run by one person which means that it is the person that finances such business do you understand that is number one number two we have to ask how do you start a sole proprietorship business how do you start it how do you start a sole proprietorship business you start it by starting you don't need a legal requirement to start unlike a company before you that you are not going to have model articles of the company if you have articles that are detailed articles of the company then you also have to submit your articles but that's not what we are talking about today what we are talking about is sole proprietorship you can basically just go outside carry your goods start selling without having to register your business do you understand when you are talking about the legal requirement to start in a sole proprietorship you don't need to go to any cac that the uh, um, companies and allied whatever it is you don't need to go to the registry that's the company's registry you don't need to go anywhere you just need to start do you understand um, Can hear me something happened to my network but i'm back i hope you can hear me please if you can hear me put it in the comment section so i know that you can hear me please please put it in the comment section so i would know if you can hear me please put it in the comment section so i can know that you can hear me Please put it in the comment section so I can know that you can, can hear me. If you can hear me, I am waiting for you guys. Okay, Jagiri Daniel said he can. So let us move on then. I think somebody already says he can. So since you can, let us move on. Now, when we're, uh, okay, Omolade. Ola Yemi said she can as well. Okay, thank you guys for being part of my live uh, video. Thank you for coming out to uh, learn together. Okay, so let's move on. Now, as I was saying, my question was whether or not a business name needs to be registered. So do you guys think that we need to register a business name? Do you think we need to register a business name? Put it down in the comment section below, please. Do you think we need to register a business name? Put it in the comment section below, please. Do you think we need to register a business name? Nobody is responding. Why are you... Okay, uh, Jagiri, Jagiri Daniel said yes and no. Okay, you guys, you guys are um, correct. Well, Jagiri is correct. Yes and no. Please, I'd like everybody to go to section one eight, section eight one four of Karma. Everybody, please, let's go to section eight one four of Karma. Please. Go to section. Can you hear me? Are you guys in section eight one four? Are you guys in section 814 of Kama? 
Should I read it out? Uh, if you can hear me, please say yes. I can read it out, please. If you can hear me, please say yes. I can read it out. Yes, yes. Um, Emedyong Okodi, you got it extremely right. Now, for you to have a business name, if you can hear me, for you to have a business name, can you guys hear me? I think since they put on the gen and section 140 registration of business name isn't needed. Don't. No, I think you got that wrong. I think you got it wrong in a little bit. I think you got it wrong a little bit. Okay, let us go to section 814 of the Kama. Let's go to section 814 of the Kama. If you go to section 814, it says that every individual, firm, or corporation having a place of business in Nigeria. Now, put a full stop to that. Every individual, firm, or corporation having a business in Nigeria and carrying on business under a business name shall be registered. First of all, you should know that section 814 is a mandatory provision because it says that every business name shall be registered. But then there is a point where he said, if, look at the last part, if, do you understand? If, the part that concerns um, 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 sole proprietorship is B, Section 814B. What does Section 814B say? It says, in the case of an individual, the name does not consist of his true surname without any addition other than his true forenames and initials thereof. What does that mean? It means that for you to have your business registered, for you to have your business registered, it means that when, okay, for example, my name is Dear Core Daniels. If my, my business is going to be Dear Core Daniels, then dear called Daniels does not need to be registered because it consists of my true surnames and my true forename. Do you understand? But if he has any inclusion other than my true surname and forename, then I would need to register that business name, even though I am a sole proprietor. Do you understand? So here you have dear called Daniels, and then let's say um, dear called Daniels and friends. Dear Code Daniels and friends, for example. And friends is not part of my name. So if I'm putting and friends to my business name, I need to register it. Or Dear Code Daniels Consult. Consult is not part of my name. So if I'm going to put consult there, I need to register it. Do you understand? The first thing is, you are not registering the business. You are registering the business name. You should know the difference. Section 814 subsection 2 the other, sorry section 814 subsection 1b rather section 814 subsection 1b tells every sole proprietor that you should make sure you register your business name except your business name you should you should make sure you register your business name yes that's if your business name consists of any other name that is not part of your name but if your business name doesn't, then you don't need to register it. You understand? So, on a normal day, for sole proprietor, sole proprietor, proprietor, the question is, do you need to register your business? No. You don't need to register your business. But do you need to register your business name? No. You don't need to register your business, except you are not using any other uh, um, except you are using any other name apart from your real name, then yes, you need to register it. Do you understand? So, whether or not you need to register your business, no. Whether or not you need to register your business name, no. But if you have any other name, or you are operating in a name that is not your true name, then you need to register your business name. Do you guys understand? That's quite straightforward and understanding. Please, if you understand it, put it in the comment section that you understand so I can know that, yes, you guys are following the lecture. Please, put it in the comment section that you understand what I just said. And in case you have any question, please ask. Do you understand it? Hello, guys, do you understand it?
Okay, Mimi said yes, she does. So let us continue then. So now, the next question that we need to understand, okay, Jagiri Daniel, the next thing we need to understand, what is the effect of not registering your business name? What is the legal consequence of not registering it? Does it make any transaction that you do null and void? That is the question. So let us say I am operating under a business name called Dear Call Daniel's Consult. And then I have um, entered into a contract with another party. And then that party realizes that my business name is not registered. And after I have paid money, the party does not want to give me my goods. Then I went to court. And then the party is alleging that my business name is wrong. Uh, or is not registered. And therefore there can be no contract. According to you, do you think that, you know, the court would hold that there can be no contract in that circumstance? What's the effect of not registering my business name in relation to a contract? So I want to know your opinion in the comment section below. I'm waiting for you guys. Hello guys, I'm waiting for you guys. Nobody seems to be answering. Nobody seems to be answering my question. So then I would move on. The contract is illegal, null, and void. That's what Jagiri said. Okay, the contract is illegal, yes. The contract is illegal, null, and void. That's what Jagiri Daniel said. The contract is illegal, null. May May said, sorry, what's the question? Now, I said earlier, uh, my question earlier was, what if a person does not register his business name and then still transacts, you know, with that business name that is not registered. So, for example, I, Dear Cord Daniels, decides to, reg decide to start up a business named Dear Cord Daniels Consult. You know, according to Section 814, when you include any other name that is not your true forename and not your true surname, then you need to register the business name. Now, I have Dear Cord Daniels Consult. By virtue of the fact that Consult has been added to my name, I need to register that business name. Do you understand? Now, if I don't register it and I still transact, if I don't register it, okay, May May said the contract to be valid. Though. <laughs> if I don't register it and I still transact, what will be the effect of the non-registration of my business name? That is the question that we are asking. Now, Jagiri Daniel says it's going to be null and void. May May said it's going to be uh, valid. Now, let us look at what the court said. In the case of Ogume Fon, if you guys have come across the case, in the case of Ogume Fon versus Nigerian Airways Limited, I don't know if you guys have heard of that case, the court was called upon to determine whether the failure of a plaintiff to register the business name having regards to the fact that the trading name was not his name now the court was called to question whether or not that contract is a valid contract since that person has not registered his business name Balogun J held that the defendant that the fact that a person carried on a trade or business in a name other than his real name without registry such business name cannot in his view have the effect of nullifying any transaction entered into by him with other parties in that name or style and such non-registration non cannot deprive him of his legal right to sue for for price if any goods are sold by him to the other party now 
that is the case of Ogumefon. The court held that the contract is still valid. Somebody said it is valid but unenforceable. That is wrong. It is valid and enforceable. The person can still collect his money from the other party. Do you understand? Even though you did not register your business name, you can still collect your money from the other party. What's the, what is the uh, contract for the, 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 the authority for that? The case of Ogume Fund versus Nigerian Airways Limited. The case of Ogume Fund versus Nigerian Airways Limited. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? We also have the case of Alowole versus Haruno Ishola. Alowole versus Haruno Ishola. Those two cases stand as authority that when a business name is not registered, it still has its validity. Ogume Fund versus Nigerian Airways. Yes, Ogume Fund versus Nigerian Airways Limited. And we also have the case of Alowole versus Haruno Ishola. Do you people hear the case? And hope you can understand what I am teaching. So let us move on. So now that we have asked ourselves the question, how do you start up a business? You start up a business without necessarily having to register that business, right? Also, you start up a business with your biz with your name. When you use your name without any other name included, then you don't need to register it. But if you include any other name or a name that is not your name, that you need to register it. That is section 814B of the Karma. Do you understand? And the effect of non-registration does not mean that your contract is invalid. That is the case of Ogume Four versus Nigerian Airways Limited and Alowole versus Haruno Ishola. Now let us move on. Now that we've known how to start up a business, how do you continue a business? The question is, when a person dies, for example, does a sole proprietorship business end? The answer is yes. When a person dies, automatically a sole proprietorship business ends do you understand and also a sole proprietorship business does not have its own legal entity okay somebody correction a loanless case held that the effect of non-registration is that is invalid and unenforceable okay thank you for that contribution i guess we then have to juxtapose it i told you guys that we are going to be having discussion on sensei in the evening Sensei is an app. I sent the link out yesterday and I will send the link out again today. Let us discuss the case of Ogume Fund versus Nigerian British Airways and juxtaposing it with the case of Alonle versus Aruno Ishola. Whether or not a contract made, made when a business name is not registered automatically invalidates such contracts. It made the contract invalid and non enforceable. Please let us make sure that we discuss this on Sensei this evening. You know, I can't know everything, and you also cannot know everything. We all have to mix our, our knowledge together and have an understanding. Do you guys understand? That's the essence of this live session, because it is more of a community reading. Do you understand? The community learning. Do you guys understand? So, let us move on. Now, we have, we have something to discuss on Sensei this evening, and that's around 7 o'clock. And basically, it's going to be about the uh, a contract, whether or not the contract is enforceable when you don't register your business. Though. Now, we are moving on. Now, uh, thank you so much, Jagiri, again, Jagiri Daniel, for that observation. Now, we are moving on to the next, to the next part, which is whether or not a, a, a sole proprietor can continue business after he has died. Like, can, for example, dear Cole Daniels, if anything happens to me and I die tomorrow, does the business, dear Cole Daniels, consult continue? The answer is no. The business does not continue. The moment I die, it dies with me. Do you guys understand? Now, that is number one. Number two, Dear Court Daniels Consort does not have a separate legal entity. I am Dear Court Daniels Consort. Dear Court Daniels Consort is me. So if anything goes wrong with the business and you want to sue, you sue me. Do you guys understand? Because Dear Court Daniels is not a legal entity, you cannot have a case against Dear Court Daniels Consort. It is not a legal entity recognized in the eye of the law. What is recognized is the owner of that business. Therefore, I am the juristic entity. I am the one that you sue and not the Echo Daniels consult. Do you guys understand? So I guess that is, that is straightforward. So I don't have a, a, a separate uh, uh, a legal entity from my business. I am my business. My business is me because it is a sole proprietorship. Do you guys understand? 
that is a, that that that's that's well to know. And because I don't have a separate legal entity, any debt accrued in my business, they can dip my their hands into my pocket and pick it up. Do you guys understand? So yes, let me give you an illustration. Here you have a okay. Here you have dear called Daniels. Do you understand? And here you have dear called Daniels. Consults. Do you guys understand? So now, if the Daniels consult made 100 million naira in profits, I am the owner of that 100 million naira. Do you understand? Let us say in the year 2020, the Daniels consult made 100 million naira. Are you guys listening? Then in the year 2021, the Daniels consult made 450 million naira uh, 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 debts but after they sold everything that their godless consult had they were able to get 300 million the remaining 150 billion you will chase me to get it down do you understand you have to get it from me do you guys understand because there is no difference between their godless consult and me we are the same do you guys understand we are the same in the eye of the law, Dear God Daniels Consort is not a legal entity that is separate from the owner. They are both the same, and therefore, if there is any debt or any profit that has been accrued uh, uh, through the Dear God Daniels Consort, you can get it from, you know, uh, uh, Dear God Daniels himself. That's if there is a if there is a debt. If there is a profit, the person that benefits is Dear God Daniels himself. So, are you guys following? Please put it in the comment section that you are following, so that I would know that. Yeah, you guys are following my class. If you are following, please put it in the comment section that you are following. Okay. Uh, Ade Lako Joker said she's following. Uh, Mimi said she's following. Okay. Very good. So I guess we can continue now. Um, yeah. So, uh... Now, another thing is that, okay, uh, Judith says she's following this, says she's following. Okay. Now, another thing you need to know about sole proprietorship is that you don't need any qualification to start a sole proprietorship business. Do you understand? You don't need any qualification whatsoever. You can start it without any qualification. Do you understand that? So that is, that is, except you are starting a medical sole proprietorship business. Or that means you want to go into private practice as a medical doctor, then you must have a license. You cannot practice as a medical doctor without a license. You cannot practice as a lawyer without being called to bar. So if I want to start the called Daniel's Chambers, for example, now not consult this time around. I want, <coughs> I want to start the called Daniel's Ch Chambers. Now, if I am starting the called Daniel's Chambers, by virtue of the fact that there is chambers in my name. By virtue of section 814, say 814 sub 1B, I need to register it. Do you understand? Because there is chambers in my name. Now, I don't need to register the business. What I need to register is the business name. And I don't need any other party. Only me can run my business. My business is not separate from me. I am not separate from my business. So when you want to sue, you sue me. Because my business is not a legal entity. That is, Dear Con Daniels Chambers. But before I can run Dear Con Daniels Chambers, I must be called to the Nigerian bar. If I am not called to the Nigerian bar, I cannot start it, which is the reason I can't start it right now. Do you guys understand? So, um, after that, I hope you guys are following. After that, uh, what else do we need to look at in sole proprietorship? It lacks continuity. One, one disadvantage of sole proprietorship is that when the owner of the business dies, then the business dies in itself. So the business, also, it lacks continuity. You know that when we're looking at, at um, the past question, when we're looking at question, uh, question number one, question number one of 2016, 2017, said that we should demonstrate our answers by illustrating the four forms of business association, and we should highlight the legal parameters that distinguishes one from the other. So this is the legal parameter we are talking about. Number one, when you are talking about a sole proprietorship, 
you need only one person. In partnership, you need two to 20 people. In a company, you can have millions. Do you understand? Now, uh, another thing is that for sole uh, so proprietorship, you only need to start with little capital. For a partnership, you def the essence of a partnership is because you want to draw money together to carry out a business. Do you understand? That's the essence of partnership. For sole proprietorship as well, you need to register the business name, although that applies to partnership and the rest. You need to register the business name if it's not your business name. You can start any form of sole proprietorship except you need a license to run it. When you need a license to run it, like a legal license, a medical license, an accounting license, then you must get your license before you can run that particular business. Legal parameters, you know, when you are talking about sole proprietorship, you need to know that your, your business is not different from you, you are not different from your business. So if your business is in debt, then you are going to accrue such debt and they can get it from your pocket. So I think that is that for a sole proprietorship business. Uh, does anybody have any question before we go into the generals of partnership? Does anybody have any question or any contribution to a sole proprietorship business before we continue? Does anybody have any question or any contribution? Does anybody have any question? I think nobody has any question. Please, if you understand it, just say yes, you understand, so that we can continue. If you understand it, please say yes, you understand, so we can continue. Do you understand it? Okay, Jagiri said yes. Uh, Adi Philippe Joel said yes, we understand. Okay, I guess it's time to go. How are you, Joel, by the way? Okay, so it's time to continue. Now, we are talking about partnership, and, and then I have spoken about sole proprietorship, now I'm talking about partnership. And then in relation to partnership, the first thing that you need to know about partnership, okay, somebody said, uh, Adela Kujoke, in case of sole proprietorship, where you need a license, like dear court chamber, does it mean, where you need a license that, like dear court chamber, does it mean uh, the business will be a separate legal entity? No, that does, no, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't mean that the business will be a separate legal entity. It just tells you that this kind of business is a different business. You are not selling rights, you are not selling paper. Here, for you to for you to be a lawyer, you must follow this procedure and then you must be called to bar because there are certain knowledge that you need to know before you can represent a person in court. Do you understand? That's, that's what it means. There are certain things that you need to know before you can represent a person in court. So when you are when you are, when you want to sell pepper, anybody can go on the street and sell pepper. But when you want to appear in court, not everybody can go on the street and say, My lord, appearing before you is a uh, Dear God Daniels, not everybody can say that. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So the the requirement of of a of of um, what's it called? The requirement of you having get having to get the license is because of the knowledge that comes with it. For you to be able to appear in court, just like saying that uh, for you to be a medical doctor, anybody can be a medical doctor. If you carry yourself to me, I will choke you injection in your leg. I don't know if they took injection in leg or two. I'm just letting you know that I, I don't have to take injection. But you need to get a license to be able to check injection. Not everybody can check injection. That is the reason there is the rule that before you can operate a medical sole proprietorship business, you must have a medical license. Do you guys do you understand? So I hope I answered your question. The fact that you have a license does not necessarily make your business a, a separate legal entity. No. Your business is not a separate legal entity. Your business is still you. The requirement of you having a, a license is because of the knowledge. You need to know certain things before you can operate that business. Do you understand? So I hope I answered your uh, your question, Joke. Yeah, Adela, Adela Joke. I hope I answered your question there. So let us move on. Let us move on to the next uh, to the next one, which is a uh, uh, yeah. Okay, Adela Kuh said I answered that question. Thank you very much. So now we are moving on to partnership. And then we are asking ourselves, what is a partnership? Now, I'm going to be distinguishing and juxtaposing. 
when you are looking at a sole proprietorship you need one person when you are looking at a partnership you need two to twenty people do you understand okay adela please say thank you you need two to twenty people when you are looking at a partnership you only need that many uh, people one person when you are looking at a partnership you need one person when you are looking at a, 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 a uh, sorry, when you are looking at sole proprietorship, you need one person. When you are looking at partnership, you need two to twenty people. Do you understand? That's the first thing you need to know. And what is the reason for a, a, a partnership? If we have partnership, okay, let me give you an example. So now, uh, I was giving this business idea that uh, um, um, there is this part of, of Niger Delta that Shell has not exploited. Do you understand? Shell has not exploited. They have, they have not explored that part of Niger Delta and they want somebody that can go there and help extract the oil, export the oil and um, get in uh, a petrol for, for us. Do you guys understand? That is, that is the business. And then after I calculated the downstream, the upstream, the whatever stream, if you don't know what downstream or upstream is, that means you going down there to go and pick, to go and carry the, the oil from the ground. And then how the cost of you employing people to do that, the cost of you doing the whole mede mede that you need to do to be able to get it out of the country, then bring it back as refined. When we calculated everything, we need 100 million. 100 million naira. And when I check my budget, what is it? So how do I, how do I then go into this business? Is a question that you now begin to ask. Because it's, it's a, it, let us say that I want to ask my friends, I run to Afilaka, I tell Afilaka to give me money. Afilaka does not have money. I run to uh, Yemi, I tell Yemi to give me money. <laughs> okay, let, let's just say I run to all my friends. And then anyway, I was able to raise 10 million naira. 10 million naira still doesn't do this job. We need 100 million. Then I can go to certain wealthy people. All those people that have so much money in the class, you know. I can go to people like Manny. And tell money, money as as per big man that you are, we don't mind 50 million coming from you. Money will be like, ah, 50 million is just 50 naira to me. I don't mind. And then we go to people like um, Mayowa. Mayowa will say, ah, can we give you the 100 million? But let me just give you 20 million and stuff like that. Then after running around, I saw that I can make a partnership with these people. <laughs> okay, Joel said I should see how money. So I can, I then after running around, I realized that I can make a partnership with these people. We can bring money together, invest it into our business. That is the business of carrying oil from the ground. You know that we need 100 million. Now the essence of partnership is to draw capital together so that you guys can have money to carry out the business. That's what partnership is about. Do you guys understand? Now, that, that is the whole thing about partnership, to draw money together to, to be able to raise money for for, for as capital for your business, for the business of all of you. So I, at the long run, I was able to have our four partners, uh, including me, we were five in total. Five in total for the sole purpose of, you know, the whole business thing and all that. Do you guys understand? Now the question is, should a partner, should a partner register their name? That's the first question we need to ask. As a partnership, you know that I just ran out down and get all these people. For our partnership business, do we need to register a name? Then we still have to go to section 814 sub 1. Section 814 sub 1. What does section 814 sub 1 say? It says every individual or firm or corporation. Now, for you to know what a firm is, according to section 2 of the partnership law of Lagos State, it defines a collection of partners as a firm so when we are talking about myself and the other four people to make it five we as a collection we are a firm so when you when you are reading karma and then you see firm you know that firm is is re related to partners corporation is related to company individuals most times related to sole proprietorship so now according to this part of karma it says that every individual firm or corporation must, regi must register their name if, in the case, let's look at A, in the case of a firm, the person does not, cons the, the name rather, does not consist of the true forename of all the partners without any addition other than the true 
four names of the individual partners or the initials or their surname. Now, I don't know if you guys have watched Suits. Have you watched Suits? Now, if you've watched Suits, you know that there was a, I'm a, I'm a suit freak, so in case. But you know that there was a, but the part in Suits, it, every single time, Louis Litt wants his name to be on the wall. And then when you look at the names that are on the wall, it's always something like Spectre, Piercing, and Litt. According to the camera, when you have your son names or your four names, you don't need to register that partnership. So, for example, when you have Spectre, you have uh, uh, um, Piercing, and you have Litt. For Spectre, Piercing, Litt, you don't need to register the name because it is the true uh, surnames of all the part of, of the um, named partners. It is the true surname of all the named partners. Therefore, you don't need to register. But when you have Jessica, Piercing, Litt, Femme, let us say Femme is part of that uh, 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 name on the wall, then you need to register it. Do you understand? And that same thing. So you know that when you are quoting section 814, Section 814 sub 1 talks about partnership. Section 814, sorry, Section 814 sub 1A talks about partnership. Section 814 sub 1B talks about sole proprietorship. Do you guys understand? Are you guys following the, the lecture? Because I want to take it bit by bit and bit by bit so that we don't get confused. Hope you guys understand what I'm teaching so far. Please, if you, are, if you follow me, please put it down in the comment section so I know, please. If you are following the lecture, please can you put it down in the comment section? Say yes, you are following, so I can tell. Okay, you guys are following. Okay, okay. So let us continue then. So now we were talking about we were talking about partnership. We've spoken about the partnership name, and then we've spoken about whether or not it needs registration, right? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Judith said she's following uh, Mr. Lopkin. I hope I pronounced the word this time around. Said is following. Okay, no problem. So when you're talking about partnership, we've already spoken about whether or not the name needs to be registered. Abi, now we've spoken about that. The next thing, can you have a partnership of over 20 people? So I want you guys to put it in the comment section. Joel, uh, Yemi, um, Daniel, and Lupkin, Mr. Lupkin, sir, and... Uh, Judith, can you have a partnership of more than 20 people? Is it possible? Put it in the comment section. Let us see. Can you have a partnership of more than 20 people? Please, you guys should put it in the, in the comment section. Yes. Mr. Lukin said, yes, we can have partnership. Okay. Okay, Mr. Lupkin said we can have partnership of more than 20 people. Okay, I don't want to waste time. Uh, no, not possible. Jagiri Daniel said no. Judith Aim said no, it is not possible. Uh, Mr. Lupkin said it's possible. Joel said no, it must then be registered as a company. I think, I think Mr. Lupkin is correct, but it's correct to an extent. Joel too is correct, but it's correct to an extent. Those people that said it is not possible at all, you are not correct. <laughs> Do you guys understand? Mr. Lucky said, yes, you can have a partnership of more than 20. Joel said, no, if you have a partnership of more than 20, then it must be a company. And then others said, now what is my authority? Let us go to section 19. My authority is section 19. Can we go to section 19, please? Are you guys there? Are you guys in section 19 now? Are you guys in section 19 now? Please, if you, are, if you have your camera here with section 19, please say yes. If you have your camera and you are in section 19, please say yes. Okay, uh, Joel said yes. Now, what does section 19 say? It says no association or partnership 
consisting of more than 20 people, that is more than 20 persons, shall be formed. Put, put, put full stop here. No association or partnership of more than 20 people shall be formed. Put full stop. Then go to the third line. Go to the third line, or fourth line rather. It says, no association partnership consisting of more than 20 people shall be formed unless it is registered as a company. Now, according to section 19, you cannot have a partnership more than 20 people. The moment your partnership is more than 20 people, it has to be a company. Do you understand? That is number one. The moment your partnership is more than 20 people, it has to be a company. That is number one. Then when we read further, it says, or is formed pursuant to some enactment in force in Nigeria. So it means that, yes, it is possible for your partnership to be more than 20, but it has to be pursuant. That, that particular partnership must be pursuant to a particular enactment. If you don't get your authority from an enactment, then that partnership cannot stand. For you to have an ordinary partnership that doesn't come under an enactment, then it must be a company if it is more than 20 people. Do you guys understand? It must be a company if it is more than 20 people. Now, a very, very important provision to also look at is sub, sub 2. Now, it says notwithstanding anything in sub 1, which means that everything we just learnt now, maybe we forget them for one minute. That is what it means. Notwithstanding anything in sub 1. Do you understand? There is nothing in this section shall apply to. Do you understand? Do you have any such enactment? Well, let us look at let us look at sub 2A. Then we see it. Now, any cooperative society registered under the provision of any enactment in force. So when you are talking about when you are talking about partnership that is more than 20 people, we are talking about a cooperative society. We are talking about a cooperative society that is registered under the provision of an enactment in force. Do you understand? We are talking about the cooperative society. So nothing in subsection one shall apply to subsection two. So the fact that they said that a, 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 an association or partnership that is more than 20 people must be a company shall not apply to subsection two. Now we've looked at you know, the first thing. The first thing is an, a cooperative society that is, um, that has, uh, uh, what's it called? A cooperative society that is enforced through an enactment. And then B, any partnership for the purposes of carrying on legal practice. That's 2BI, legal practice. So where you have a partnership that is for legal practice, then you can have more than 20 partners. That is why I said Mr. Lukin was correct. So when Mr. Lukin said you can have partnership of more than 20 people, he meant, or I am assuming that he meant, I am assuming that he meant more than 20 people for a legal thing. That is for legal practitioners, for lawyers. Do you understand? Not just that, when you look at 2BII, it also talks about accountants. So there are three exceptions to the rule three exceptions to the rule that partnership must not be more than 20 people. The first exception is where there is an enactment for cooperative society. The second exception is for the purpose of carrying legal practice. That's carrying out legal practice. The third exception is for accountants. So those are the three exceptions to the fact that partnership must not be, must, uh, must not be more than 20 people. That's the exception to it. Do you guys understand? Are you following this class? Does anybody have any question? Are you guys following the class? I'm trying as much as possible to make it as simple. Is everybody following the class? Please, if you don't have a question, or if you have a question rather, or you want me to, you know, go back on something that I have said, please make sure you, you, you put it down. Okay, Jagiri said interesting. Okay. Please, if you want me to go back on something I have said, please put it down so that I can go back or explain further for further understanding. Please, um, does anybody have any question?
Okay, so in the absence of any question, I will just go further. In the absence of any question, I will go further. Now, what is the legal effect of a partnership? What is the legal effect of a partnership of more than 20 people? What is the legal effect of a partnership? I want you guys to respond in the comment section. What is the legal effect of a partnership of more than 20 people? What is the legal effect of a partnership of more than 20 people? Nobody knows. Wow. Seems nobody knows. Okay, somebody has responded. How many exceptions to the rule? We have three exceptions. Emanuela Agbo said uh, a fine. A fine. Well, well, well. Emmanuel, Emanuela, I, I want to believe that you, you drew your authority of a fine from somewhere. Where did you draw your authority of a fine from? Because uh, by perusing through the camera, it is criminal liable to liable for a penalty. Someone said it is criminal, i.e. liable to a penalty. That is uh, Joel. Um, Mr. Lupkin, Mr. Lupkin said uh, it will vitiate the validity of the registration. It will vitiate. But they did not register in the first place, Mr. Lupkin. The essence of it is they didn't register. And then they were operating a partnership of about, let's say, 50 people. You are operating a factor. You know that on a normal day, you are not supposed to register partnership. Hope you guys know that there are different types of partnership we have three types of partnership we have the general partners we have the limited partners and then we have the limited liability partners here i am speaking for general partners right section uh 19 sub 3 of karma okay guys let us go to section 19 sub 3 of karma um Emmanuel agbo Emmanuel agbo said that um uh the effect is that it becomes a is become registrable as a company. Okay, Emmanuel Agbo said the section three, section subsection three it talks about fine. So if at any time the members, the number of members of an association of partnership exceeds twenty in contravention of this section, and it carries on business for more than fourteen days while the contravention continues. Each part, each person who is a member of the company, association, or partnership during the time it is it so carries on business is liable to a fine as prescribed by the commission for every day during which the default continues. So, yes, Imadela Abba is correct, very, very correct. She said that there has to be a fine, and the fine is to be made by the commission. And so every party of such partnership will be liable to a fine. But that is not the only effect of the, uh, of the, uh, this thing. Someone said by penalty that it's going to be, they are going to be criminally liable. Do you have your authority for that as well? Emmanuel Abbas gave us in section 19, subsection 3, as an authority for fine, which is extremely correct. So the person that said um, that there will be a criminal uh, they will be criminally liable should please give us an authority uh, if it is not general partner will it be registered okay the effect is that it becomes registrable as a company okay uh, is criminal okay okay before we before we move on now before before I answer the question I want us to know firstly the partnership in Nigeria is regulated by three acts Partnership in Nigeria is regulated by three acts. When you are looking at the East and the North, it is regulated by the Partnership Act of 1960. When you are looking at the East and the North in Nigeria, partnership is regulated by the Partnership Act of 1960. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 1890, rather. 1890. That is, uh, you know, a statute of general application that applied in England. Do you understand? Before, before 1900. So, Partnership Act of um, 1890. Now, when you are looking at Western Nigeria, then you are looking at the Partnership Act of Western Nigeria 
1959. Partnership Act, Western Nigeria, 1959. And then when you are looking at partnership in Lagos State, you know Lagos is always different. When it comes to criminal code, Lagos has a different criminal code. When it comes to Lagos, has everything in Lagos is always different. So Lagos has the uh, 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 partnership law of Lagos State, nine uh, sorry 2004 which was amended in 2009 do you guys understand lagos has the partnership act uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2004 that's the, sorry partnership law of lagos state 2004 that was amended in 2009 do you guys understand so um the reason it is possible for the partnership like partnership to be regulated by three different acts in Nigeria is because partnership as an item falls under the concurrent list. And what is the concurrent list? A list that state government and federal government can legislate upon. And since there is no federal legislation on partnership, the state government uh, legislation can, can carry on. That's the reason Lagos State has it. Do you guys understand? That's number one. Number two, you should know that when you are talking about limited liability partners, only Lagos states has limited liability partners. In other states, there are only two types of partnership. That is the general partnership and the limited partnership. It is only Lagos state that has limited liability partnership. Do you guys understand? That's before we continue. And then now we are talking about the effect of having more than 20 people. Immanuela Agdo said that when you have more than 20 people, carry on a, a partnership then according to section 19 subsection 3 of karma they are liable to pay fine which is very correct also according to the case of Akilose I don't know how to pronounce it but it's Aki then L-O-S-E Akilose versus ALT Limited according to the case of Akilose versus ALT Company Limited we are a partnership of over 100 members of the Ondos, Ondo District Timber Group was held by the court to be an association that is null and void. So not only are they going to pay a fine, the association in itself is null and void. So for the paying of fine 19 subsection 3 for the association being null and void, Akilose versus ALT Company Limited. Do you guys understand before we move on do you understand please if you understand please put it in the comment section below please if you understand put it in the comment section below Nobody's saying something. Okay, I'm about to round up the class because I can see it's already over an hour. I'm about to round up the class. Okay, I understand. Manila Agbo said I understand. I hope people are you people are getting the cases as well because it's also very important. Okay, so now let's move on. Now I'm about to round up, so I'll just be saying things very fast. Round round up the class now. According to Section 3 of the Partnership Law of Lagos State, it defines partnership to consist of two or more people. Do you understand? Two or more people that is established for the that is established for the sole purpose, that is established for the sole purpose of carrying on business. So when you are talking about partnership, the first thing that you need to know about partnership is that there must be two or more people. And those two or more people are coming together for the sole purpose of making business. And that be, they, are, they are coming together for the sole purpose of making business so that they can have profit. Partnership is not charitable. They are not coming to dash you money. Partnership is for there to be profit. That's the essence of partnership. Somebody is asking a question. Please explain limited partnership and limited liability partnership the difference. Yes, I would love to explain it, but that is going to be our next class on company law. I will explain it in our next class. Today, I'm going to be talking about the general partners. Do you understand? And then next class, we are going to be talking about the limited partners and the limited liability partners. Especially 
uh, yes, the limited partner, especially in relation to the uh, partnership law of Lagos State. And I'll also be talking about the incorporated trustee in our next class. So in next class, we are talking about two things. Three things, actually. Limited partners, then uh, limited liability partners, and incorporated trustee. But today, we are talking about just general partners. What are the things that you need to know about the general partners? Do you guys understand? So he said, okay, yes. What are the things that you need to know about the general partners? And the reason, I'm very sorry, the reason I had to do that is because we already... If the class is supposed to be an hour and then it's already eight minutes past an hour so i'm trying to round up everything for this class please i'm very very sorry you guys did not come on time so we couldn't kick start on time so yes now we are talking about we are talking about the definition of partnership according to section three of the partnership law of legal state and then we define it to be two or more persons that come together for the sole purpose of business and then for the sole purpose of business and to make profit and then that's you can also see that in the case of show newbie Shonubi versus Onofeko. Shonubi versus Onofeko. That's the authority for Section 3 of the uh, uh, Partnership Law of Lagos State. Shonubi versus Onofeko. Now, when you're looking at Section 2, like I said earlier, a collection of partners is known as a firm. That is Section 2. A collection of partners is known as a firm. Section 2 of the Partnership Law of, uh, of a Lagos State. And then I also told you earlier that the essence of having a partnership is because of a business you cannot have a partnership devoid of a business that cannot be a partnership for you to have a partnership there must be a business so the essence of a partnership is because of a business and then that's the case of already i don't i don't know if i pronounce that well but let me get the spelling correctly already versus dada already versus dada do you guys understand for there to be a partnership there must be a business already versus dada now it should be noted that when you're talking about general partners every partner is an agent of the firm as well as other partners especially when he has actual or apparent authority you know what apparent authority is right i'm presuming that we all know so when you're talking about actual or apparent authority imposed or you know uh, uh, closed upon the particular partner then that partner is an agent of the firm and an agent of other partners it means that that partner can go into a contract with third party and such contracts when he has apparent or uh, 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 apparent authority actual authority or ostensible authority section six section six of the partnership law of legal state where a partner has apparent authority actual authority or ostensible authority then he can bind the firm as well as other partners in any contract but when that partner is devoid of such authority, when the partner does not have such authority, then if the third party doesn't know that that partner doesn't have that authority, then that contract is still binding on the firm as well as other partners. Section 7 and Section 8 of the Partnership Law of Legal State. Do you guys understand? So there are two rules here. We are a partner has ostensible or actual authority. Then whatever contract he goes into whatever thing he does is binding on the firm because the partner is an agent of the firm as well as other partners that's section six but where that partner is devoid and then the third party the third party in this case did not know that that partner is devoid of such authority then the contract is still binding on the firm as well as other partners section seven and nine of the partnership law of Lagos State. Do we all understand that? I hope, I hope we all understand that. Now, partnership is created orally or in an agreement or by conduct. Partnership is created orally, it is also created in an agreement and can also be created by conduct. Do you understand? Now, I think this is where I'm going to stop the class, although I want to talk about how do you end a partnership agreement. How do you end a partnership agreement? But why not we talk about that in next class, and also we talk about, uh, we talk about the uh, uh, limited partners. Also, we have to give a little reference to general partners as well, limited partners and limited liability partners. So before I end the class for today, does anybody have any question whatsoever? If you have a question, please put it down in the comment section so that um, I would know and answer the question before we end the class. Does anybody have any question?
what's your authority for the ways of creating a partner? Professor Abugu, is his textbook that said it. That's my authority. <laughs> That's, that's, that's what is smart the Professor Abubu says, but so Professor Abubu is my authority. Does anybody have any other question? Okay, so I guess in the absence of any question, then uh, I'm likely to end the class right now. Okay, so I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for another company law class around 9 o'clock. I hope you guys will be present. Uh, so I'll see you guys later. Bye.